So guys, it is here, the MacBook Pro 2020 16 inch. Yeah, let's get into it. I can't wait. This is the new GPU, the 5600M. Let's see. Oh, MacBook Pro. You already know. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Like, wow. Dreams really do come true. Finally have it right here in my possession. All right, so let's just enjoy the presentation. I'm coming from the 2015 MacBook Pro. Okay, so we got the Apple logo on the side. We got MacBook Pro branding. This pull tab, so no unboxing knife is necessary. My first touch bar MacBook. Whoa! Okay, this box here is kind of thick, but you guys see this? It's got this different feel kind of feel to it. It's kind of heavy to be a lid. And here it is in the glorious space gray, the 16 inch, the 560M MacBook Pro 16 inch. And of course we got your books. Does this come with space gray stickers or just white? <gasps> it comes with space gray stickers. Wow. It's a good thing I didn't go with the silver, right? The silver probably would have had the white generic stickers. But anyway, yeah, nonetheless, I'm happy, man. Thank you, Apple, for space gray Apple stickers. I know in the iMac Pro, they gave us uh, black Apple stickers. I should do a review on the iMac Pro. <laughs> Is it worth $10,000? Watch my review. Okay, we got the, how many watts this is again? I think this is 95 watt, or 96 watt Type-C power adapter. And of course you have your Type-C cable. RP MagSafe, it is not here on this model. And I don't think Apple is gonna bring it back, but who knows. Look at the MacBook Pro. <laughs> oh. Now, I don't know, you know, Apple just recently announced the Mac is moving forward to the silicon chips. But you shouldn't feel discouraged for buying a MacBook now because Apple is still going to support Intel-based Macs. But without further ado, let's just rip out the plastic. Moment of silence, please. Wow. My brand new MacBook Pro. <laughs> Holy crap, man. I can't believe it. I'm feeling a little emotional because, because, all right, let me give you guys a brief history while this boots up. I'm going to open this up for the first time too, and it's going to just boot right up so you guys can see. We're going to rip this plastic off. I'm feeling nostalgic. Ooh. All right, so brief history. The 2015 MacBook Pro 15 inch, that was a graduation grip for graduating high school. I got that, um, and that was like my first Mac technically, but I didn't buy it, that was a gift. Um, I also got a computer when I was younger, when I was eight years old. This is it, this is my first MacBook, like, wow. I'm gonna set this up and I'll be right back. Yo, look at the size of this trackpad, yo. Yo, this is insane. If you guys been watching me for years, you guys know I always like starting my devices fresh new. I just like to leave all the old stuff on the older devices, but that's just me. And also for students, if you purchase a Mac or an iPad, you get a free set of AirPods. So you can either choose between the AirPods with charging case or AirPods with wireless charging, or even better yet, the AirPods Pro. I picked up the standard AirPods. You guys know how I feel about AirPods Pro. Now, thankfully, I still have my student account. Uh, yes, I did went to college. I never had this. I had the first generation. That's the one with just the charging case. So this is gonna be an upgrade for me. I still have my Pros but I prefer regular AirPods. They just fit my ear a little bit better. I got these. Yes. <laughs> custom made. So yeah, so you guys can see, you can customize your AirPods Pro. So it says, Simply Pops 2020. I like to put my name on things, especially as the years go by. You're gonna look at these AirPods and say, wow, I got these in 2020. And of course you have your standard lightning cable. It's not type C. And of course you have your books. And yeah, the pairing process is going to be one, two, three. You just lift it up and it's going to come right up. See? Just like that. Tap on connect and it's going to connect without a matter of seconds. Okay, you have announced, continue, done, paired. 
and it's paired up to my MacBook, my iPad, my other iPhone, my SE. Yeah. All right, guys, so 24 hours later of using the 16 inch MacBook Pro, it's a dream to edit on. I mean, it just edits my videos like butter and no lag, no hiccups. I haven't pushed it to its limits just yet. I do have it docked up, so it's gonna be better for uh, you know air circulation, so it's not gonna be as hot. It looks beautiful, it performs well, and like I said, I'm coming from the 2015 MacBook Pro, and this is the 15 inch. So I gotta say, this was starting to slow down as soon as I added LUTs and used a lot of motion VFX. This thing started to really slow down and it was painfully slow. It was starting to hinder my business, but for web browsing or for simple tasks, this thing still kicks butt. This video, as you guys can see, this is gonna be 4K where it could be optimized for your iPhone. Forget about it, you get what I'm saying? But this MacBook here, no problems. No beach ball, nothing like that. Now the actual touch bar is it being a gimmick. I used it last night, but I have my MacBook docked up onto a monitor, so I'm not really utilizing the touch bar as much. It's also good for predictive text, so if I'm typing in something, it could just show up on the touch bar, or even going through the RGB color, it's nice to have that that spectrum of colors right there on the touch bar. That's just me using it last night. Now, how do I feel about this Mac being Type-C only, basically? I think it's a welcome change. Apple could have slid in a USB-A, but I understand Type-C is the future, and I love Type-C. It's just, Type-C is so powerful that I'm able to power up my monitor and the laptop is still being charged, and then my monitor can work as a hub. So yeah, Type-C is the future. But for them getting rid of the SD card slot, I think that's a no for me because photographers and videographers, we need that SD card slot. There's really no need for Apple to remove that. I'd much rather them remove the headphone jack and in favor of the SD card slot because now photographers and creators have to walk around with dongles. But that's just what, that's the world we're living in. So I just missed the Glow and Apple logo. I hope Apple can bring it back some form of way. But the reason why they got rid of it is because they make the display a little thinner. But I don't know, it was just so cool and iconic to look at that glow in the dark Apple logo. And if I haven't discussed about the specs already, this has one terabyte of SSD. This has eight core, 2.3 gigahertz. And also this has the uh, 560M graphics card. And I gotta say, video is just moving smooth i haven't really utilized it to its full potential just yet it might have probably been an overkill for me for videographers we need as much gpu as we can because things are constantly being moving around and motions and you know keyframing and yeah we need that gpu but yeah specs are phenomenal it cost me a whopping a whopping three thousand five hundred dollars basically four thousand dollars for this macbook yeah, I know it's a lot of money, but we all know if you guys work for the business, it's gonna pay for itself. And yeah, time is money, that's what they say. And since this is so fast, the time is gonna be quicker and it's gonna be more money in your pocket. Apple has recently announced that they are making their own silicon chip. So they get rid of Intel and they're gonna have their own chipset. This is a big deal because if you guys remember the iPhone 4, that was the first custom made Apple chip. That was the A4 chip and it performed well. And then from here on out, it was just improvements on top of improvements. And yeah, and I think it's just time. If you brought a Mac recently, I wouldn't feel bad. I wouldn't return your Mac because it's gonna take some time to mature in a sense. It's never good to buy a first generation product. Sometimes it's not good to, but don't feel discouraged because Apple is still gonna update and support their Intel-based Macs. Um, and they're even gonna release some more Macs too. So yeah, so don't feel bad. This is just something to look forward in the future. So five years later, for example, you're gonna buy a MacBook and it's gonna have the Apple Silicon chip, whatever Apple is gonna call it. Um, but yeah, it's just the future. And that has me thinking the Macs could last even longer because really and truly, if Apple is making their processor and the software, they're gonna optimize the Mac even better. So I think this is a good look, but Tim Cook said in the next two years, everything is gonna transition to ARM or the silicon chip. But I think they're gonna release it first on a low power MacBook. So maybe the Air or the MacBook. Apple made a custom chip for the Apple Watch, the iPhone, the iPad, even the HomePod, which is right here. It's the same exact processor chip. So it makes sense. This is like the only thing that's left 
of the processors. And this is the juggernaut. We all know computers are like the juggernaut. You get what I'm saying? You can have 100 different windows open. You can have Final Cut, Photoshop. So this is a pretty big deal. And so far, it's looking scary for Windows, for Boot Camp on the Mac. This is Apple's custom-made processor. So how is it going to perform on the Windows side? This is a new era. I'm in a new room. I got a new MacBook, new setup. This is just like, everything is new. So if you guys enjoyed, I appreciate it with a thumbs up. Make sure you guys subscribe with notifications on. And other than that, your boy Pops, I hope you guys stay safe, stay clean, and stay simple. Peace.